Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Christy Cook, who has revealed herself, I think it's been a month and a half, as the genius, the founder behind Spill Sesh, the channel. It's a tea channel on YouTube. Yes. Um, first of all, thanks for being in. And, and you have more than 700,000 subscribers. So let's start. I want to talk about the reveal, but I want to start with what is a tea channel? A tea channel is an evolving term these days. I feel like in the beginning when I first started, it was a lot of playful conversations about influencers, especially in the makeup community on YouTube. And yeah. now we're even talking about celebrities and the stories aren't always just silly and fun. We're talking about a lot of serious things as well now. So I think it's journalistic. I was looking at me. So let's talk about this um, reveal. You were anonymous for several years. Yeah. What made you decide to reveal yourself and give bring your name to the world? I definitely felt like it was time after five years to do the reveal, just to expand the things that I could do within the channel. I felt like things were going really good, but in order to grow and you know go out and maybe do interviews with people or talk to the people that I'm making videos about, that I would probably it's need hard to, to be anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. What's been the reaction so far? Because I imagine with anonymity comes a certain level of comfort and privacy. For sure. And now, of course, y you must be getting a lot of people reaching out. Tell us about that. I think it's definitely a mixed feeling of just really excited that I'm not stressed out about people finding me and you know it getting out before I could put it out there. So there's a relief there in a way. Um, obviously now I'm open to more criticism because I'm showing myself and I'm representing the platform. Just Welcome to so the internet, <laughs> yes. right? Um, but overall it's been good. It's been good. So I want to step back to the genesis of how this started. Um, so you were at TMC. Walk us back first of all a little bit about um, how this became interesting to you. Take us to the point before you got to TMZ. When you were growing up, what did you want to be? When I was growing up in the sixth grade, my middle school had a broadcast program and I fell in love with video production. I wanted to be a part of it in any capacity, mm -hmm. whether I was in front of the camera, behind it, editing, anything. And I feel like at that time, YouTube was really big and it was everybody in my school was wanting to be a YouTuber. Everyone wanted to make videos. We were making music videos online. And that always just stuck with me. So when I went to high school, the school I went to had a production program as well. Which we, high school did you go to? It was called American Heritage School mm -hmm. in Plantation, Florida. Mm -hmm. And we went to broadcast competitions. It was very intense and we took it very seriously. So I knew I wanted to work in production and I that, that was like my dream. Um, at the time I was making like videos that kind of gave like a 60 minute type of deal. Like like I'm doing now basically. Yeah, like a human, <laughs> yeah, okay. human interest stories. Right. And then as I was just looking for jobs, I did end up at TMZ. And then I noticed that a lot of people that we were reporting on are just like all celebrities. Yeah. But no one was really covering influencers or internet celebrities and that was something I was still really into just from even back in middle school I loved youtubers and no one ever really paid attention to their lives and I felt like that was something why that, not I mean yeah. it's interesting we have a we have a creator economy list and some but I, I agree with you that mainstream media has been slow to cover YouTube celebrities is it just old style thinking why would we not be covering people who are making a lot of money and yield a lot of influence I think in the beginning, like a couple years ago when I started my channel, they didn't really take them seriously or even know what kind of money was in YouTube or how much money those creators were making at the time to really take them seriously is like, that's a job. And because they're working independently and they're not signed to a company or anything, you are just not looking at it as legit as it was. And so they weren't talking about it in that way. but. Then the numbers started coming in, and people were looking, and people were paying attention, and so they started. And to you're pick one it up. of those influencers now. So it's sort of interesting. <laughs> like, like, 
so talk a little bit, Christy, about the, the first, what made you decide to start Spill Sesh? You were at TMZ, yeah. am I right at the time? Was there something that made you think, I want to have a channel? Honestly, at that time, I was making content on the side that was not related to talking about news, but I was like making cooking videos and I just liked creating content. But then I stumbled upon the T-Channel community and was like, I love what they're doing here. This is the stuff that I wish we were talking about at work. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's not being covered or being taken seriously. So I figured I could give it a shot. And were you anonymous because you were still working? Is that like what was the decision to basically from the start kind of keep the channel as the brand and not yourself? Well, I felt like if I was in the videos, it wouldn't really be true to me. I felt like I could give my full personality if nobody was looking or like no mm -hmm. one knew that it was me. And that's even how I did like my cooking videos. I wasn't in the videos. It was anonymous as well. So I guess that's like my secret for so just talk starting about your, out. Talk about the personality. I've seen several of your videos and I know that, um, is it uh, Manny MUA? Was that, yes. your first, was that your first one? He was the one who did the reveal yes. for you and your, um, what, what differentiates your channel from others? And talk about the personality that you tried to bring to it or you have brought to it. Yes. There's definitely a ton of other people that make the same videos yep. as me, but I think there's people that want to give their full opinion and they want to, you know, go in on people and, you know, this is my side, this is what I believe, you should believe it too. And I think in the beginning, I was trying to find what was best for my channel. And now I'm just trying to be in the middle of this is what's going on, this is what people are saying. And what do you guys think? Like, what's so the overall opinion? I'm in the all middle, the information. in the middle is like not sycophantic and not cruel. Is that what you mean by in the middle? Kind of of letting other people formulate their own opinions and just providing people with the information, but also insight of, oh, remember when this happened like a couple months ago and things like that, which I feel like maybe in mainstream media when they're reporting on influencers, they're like, this is the story and this is it. But remembering something that happened like 10 years ago that they said or did, I think people wanna maybe feel like they're talking to their friend on FaceTime when they're yeah. getting some Yeah, it is more like of a this. community, isn't it? Yeah. And so how did the, were you feeling a lot of pressure as this went on to, um, to reveal yourself? I, I've read other places that you were talking about some of the, like some people had guessed who you were. They were guessing somebody else who I don't even know. Um, Morgan, is <laughs> yes, that it? They were kept guessing. It was Morgan Adams. Was there a moment where you thought, okay, I've got to, I'm just going to let everybody know it's me? I definitely thought after some time, it, it felt like it was a right time. There was still curiosity there, which I liked. And so I wasn't just going to put it out there and everyone be like, okay, that's, that's that. She wasn't Morgan. So I felt like the time was right. It wasn't too much where everyone was, you know, wondering and maybe would have looked into way more of like where I live and, you know, try to find me and it wasn't scary anymore. I think it, it could be scary, but I want to talk, there's a lot of people who will watch this who would love to replicate what you've done. and. I'd like to know a bit more about what you've learned along the way. Let's start with TMZ. What did that experience teach you? Because I'm sure that was very formative in the approach that you took. For sure. I think that taught me a lot about work ethic and work, we worked long hours and we always wanted to be first to the story. And that's something that I really took with me that you know, if I'm quick with it, it'll probably do better for me. What was your role at TMZ? I was a photo coordinator. Mm -hmm. So I basically looked on Instagram like all day long and, you know, saw who was on vacation and would collect all these things and then basically email them out and be like, which one do you want to put on the website? Right. Yeah. So speed is of the essence. So, yeah. um, and then you started, you became so pop when did you quit your job because the channel became so popular that it became very much your you know most lucrative yes. source of income when did that happen i quit in 2021 and can you tell me what you think the secret is to 
the videos that have done especially well, when you go back and sort of think about, this is why this resonated with the people that love my content. Um, in talking about the college scandal, that was one of the times that really took off for me. But I feel like people could also relate to it. Like I had said, USC was my dream school and I didn't get in. And Because you didn't pretend to be on crew, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or your mother didn't get somebody to pretend, yeah. yeah, whatever. I was so upset at the time. And I think, you know, when I was talking about it, people also related to that feeling of, you know, when you're of a status, you are open to these opportunities that are not legal, but they're presented to you. And and so the T yeah. channel aspect of that would be, is it Olivia Jade? Is that like, yeah. what, what's the, what is the angle? That's the angle, because she was quite a big influencer, she right? She was. And became a target. Yeah. Um, how, was that the way that you told the story there in terms of how you, that one resonated? Because you're talking about yourself. Yeah. And yet this, you're anonymous in the, the same story, time. I had revealed things about myself, but not revealing like my name or yeah. exactly my age or anything. But in saying that, you know, this scenario happened and also this YouTuber that a lot of people like and we've seen get a lot of opportunities is just so shocking. And I think in me just reacting the way yeah. that a lot of other people did it resonated with people. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I can give you my own opinions. I felt, <laughs> I remember at the time thinking, yeah, a little spoiled maybe, but that's <laughs> that's just me. Um, so take us through to the different channels. You're very big on YouTube. What do you think about TikTok? I know you've got an Instagram presence, but I'm curious how you're finding all these other different ways to reach people. I recently really loved TikTok. Just In, recently? Um, I'd say this year, I've really dedicated myself to posting at least one TikTok a day because I've seen some, I've seen growth on TikTok. I've seen, I found a lot of stories on TikTok and I I feel like in ways it's good and in ways it's bad. But How so? Give me the good and the bad. I think that TikTok is very quick. The attention span on there, you got to hook them in or they are going to scroll right past. So I've definitely had to get creative with how I'm starting these videos. And, you know, it's very different than my YouTube videos where we're taking 10, 15 minutes to talk about something in depth where I need to say it in the first five seconds on TikTok or no one's going to care. It's like a haiku or something. Is it, yeah. It's a different realm of influencers too, right? Do you find... I mean, do you find you're covering different people, covering things yes, differently? Yes, for so, sure. So as you've pivoted more to TikTok, there's only 24 hours in a day. Are yeah. you spending less time on YouTube? Or how do you how do you balance out your time, especially at this juncture where now other opportunities open up? I've definitely had to balance it. Um, I try to edit a YouTube video in the morning. And then the rest of the day, I'm looking on TikTok. I'm looking on Instagram, looking on Twitter for other stories and there's like niche stories that maybe don't need a whole YouTube video but I could talk about it for a couple seconds to a minute I'll make a TikTok about it and that's fun that's exciting mm -hmm. um but just as hard still you gotta I'm editing it on my computer still I'm not doing it on my phone but it's fun I like TikTok talk about your relationship with the people that you cover because i was fascinated that you mentioned as uh, i'm keeping it manny mua yes that was the first person you covered and here he was five years later doing your makeup as you're doing your reveal do you yeah. do you now get to know these people like now that you are christy and not you know the anonymous founder of spill sesh how, how has that changed the relationship with the people you cover I think nothing changes at all. I mean, I think in the beginning when I said I was going to do a reveal, people were like, oh my gosh, no, don't do it. Like, they'll sue you or they're going to come for you. And I'm like, these people don't hate me. And if they were going to sue me, they were going to sue me But anyway. they do, they do. They tend to sue, don't they, when it's a negative video? Is like, is there a... I've never been hit with a cease and desist by, you know, anyone. So that's been good. I definitely think because the videos that I'm making are very much like, this is what people online are saying. This is what they're saying. There's not much for them to come at me for. Yeah, you're not just like taking their content yeah. and, you know, running it. <laughs> but I definitely think that, you know, 
I could make that video with Manny and he does something wrong, it's not, I'm not, not going to talk about it because we sat down for a video together, which is something I said in the reveal that I was surprised that he wanted to do it and I was happy that he was so game to film that video because it's not like the first video I ever made that was about him was the only video I've ever made that was about him. Do you think you cover things differently now than you did five years ago, four years ago? For sure. I think in the beginning, I was testing the waters of how things were going to even just visually look. And in the beginning, it was text on the screen. And now I'm doing voiceovers. And mm -hmm. there's been graphic changes. And I had an intro at one point with like a song. And then I'm like, the things we're talking about are so serious. I feel like we got to get rid of this cheeky intro. We can't have the teacup anymore. It's It feels more like news. So it's more, and is that deliberate on your part? Or you think it's just the way the world's going that we're more serious now? I mean, maybe, maybe I, not. I think maybe a little bit of both. I think, you know, I didn't need to talk about the serious stuff if I didn't really want to, but that's kind of, it felt necessary. It felt like I needed to cover it. If I was going to cover influencers, I was going to have to cover everything. Who are some of the influencers that really stick in your mind, either ones you admire or who are the gift that keep on giving to you from a, I mean, I could just scroll through, I've got some names here, but you tell me, you know, um, what, what does it take to be a great influencer now in these different channels? I think it's, it really depends. It's all over the map in terms of maybe someone. I mean, I've don't... got like Jeffree Star, I mean, I've got, yeah. got a whole list of names. <laughs> I thought, you know what, I don't follow these people. I'm just going to ask Chris. Yeah. Who are the ones that stand out to you? And I think why? there's definitely ones that have made names for themselves, whether people like it or not, like Jeffree Star, who's yeah. very controversial, but somehow has this big empire of makeup, and he has a storefront now in Wyoming, and people still come and support him. But then there's people like Alex Cooper, who you know, started on Call Her Daddy, and now she's created this empire for herself as yeah, well. Yeah, she spoke at one of our conferences. Yeah, it's actually kind of an inspiring story. It is. Take your brand with you and take it somewhere else. Yeah, and she's really grown it and I think done a lot of things that not a lot of other influencers have done. Is that what you would like? Give me a sense of, of the runway that you have now and the different ways in which you're thinking differently about your own brand. I think in revealing myself, it was definitely about growth and wanting to do more than just the YouTube videos. I would love to expand it to doing interviews with people and using those interviews for YouTube videos that I'm making because a lot of the time I'm watching podcasts, I'm watching influencers do interviews, and then I'm breaking down what they said on other people's shows. Right. Right. I was like it. PewDiePie playing yeah. a game, like, oh, look at him play. I'd like to do that myself kind of thing. It's kind of, yeah, it's like, you know, they're talking about their growth, their journey on YouTube, and I'm breaking it down in a video, or they're addressing a controversy that they're in. If I was doing that interview, I would use it in a YouTube video. Who would be some of your top interview choices now if you're going to do it? Now, so many. Comes to mind, <laughs> so many, so many. I, I, I'd be remiss, you know, if Forbes is, of course, about money, and you mentioned some figures. Or, what kind of, what kind of money um, were you making at the point at which you decided to quit? I was hearing different figures. You know, there must be a certain amount comes in where you're like, my day job no longer makes sense. For sure, I think something about it is that I was very much in a saving mode. I was like, anything that I'm making, it's absolutely going to be saved, which is why I stayed at that job probably two years longer than I think most people would. I think they would see the money come in and be like, I'm done. I, I'm, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. But you were making what, 20,000 a month roughly or no? What is that fair to say? I'm just, I'm going off the figures yes. that, that I've read in different articles. At the just, time, yeah, around there was what I was making when I was leaving. Right. But I had been making that for a while prior, and I just saved it. I kept it. I said, until I can buy a house, essentially, and... Which you have. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm not going to ask where it is, because I believe <laughs> in anonymity myself in that respect. Nobody needs the trolls coming out. But at this at this juncture, when you look at the 
economics of the different channels, have they shifted at all? Because you certainly hear sometimes people complain, the algorithms change, it's not as lucrative or it's more lucrative. What's changed from where you sit since you're living this day in, day out? I think there's so many people that want to create content online. It's definitely way more competitive than it was a couple of years ago. So you always have to be on it and pay attention to the algorithm, what people are liking, what people aren't liking. If a certain topic isn't working, maybe don't do it again or, you know, do it on TikTok instead. Mm -hmm. Do it on Instagram. Maybe a whole YouTube video, people don't want to hear about the same subject for like 15 minutes. So always having to look at the analytics and be really mindful of what other people are watching or what people that are making the content you want to make or are making are doing and what's succeeding for them. I have to ask about TikTok. You know, we've written a lot here about the connections to ByteDance, to China, where I used to live. I'm not quite as paranoid as some people are, but does that ever give you pause when you think about the fact that TikTok, they're thinking of banning it in Congress? For sure. I think that's exactly why I would never just solely stick to one platform. And that goes for any platform. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. What about X? You mentioned Twitter. I yes. still call it Twitter. <laughs> a lot of people have abandoned that platform yeah. for a multiplicity of reasons. How about you? I'm really not using Twitter like I used to in the beginning of all of this. I was very active on Twitter. I tweeted all the time. And then I think over time, now it's just a place that I go to to look at information or see what people are talking about, what's trending, and then I log off. It seems more political yeah. than it used to be. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll just leave it at that and, and say. Um, in terms of, uh, you've mentioned some of the opportunities. Is there anything specific you want to tell us about in terms of what's around the corner for you? I mean, now that, you, again, I don't want to make too big a deal of the fact that you're, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people knew who you were in your circle, mm-hmm. right? I mean, this is just more of a public thing. But with that sort of public presence, are you, thinking of other ways like books or TV or speaking what's come your or even brand endorsements right that's yeah hard, easier to do for sure is any of that in the works right now I saw something about a second channel I do have a second channel um, right now I'm doing like YouTube shorts on there so like short form content on this second channel because Putting it on the first channel would be like brand mess, confusion. Yeah, mess with the algorithm. We're not trying to do that. Um, but I would love to do those interviews I was talking about on there. Go to red carpet events, movie premieres, interview people, and throw it on there. And yeah. I think maybe being a correspondent of sorts, that's kind of the next path. So you grew up a consumer of social media. Christy, and now you're a producer, and there's been a lot of attention, too, to the impact that it has, especially on women. On do you, What do you think about that? What's uh, both the impact that your own content has and the impact it had on you? I think certainly looking towards other women that are in this field and just, you know, giving women a voice and also voicing our opinions because not everyone wants to hear them a lot of the time and just staying true to that because I think even in the videos I'm making a lot of people want to criticize what I'm saying even when I was anonymous you know and people didn't know me people are still making comments about oh I don't like the way you said this or the way you sound or the you know way you talked it there's always something people are going to say but I feel like women especially just really take the hit and guys can kind of get away with a little bit more of an opinion and do you like the anonymity that's allowed on YouTube like where people can go on and like you know I'm best boy 452 like they can hide who they are that makes it easier to be cruel for sure I feel like in a way though I can't exactly judge it because I was anonymous for a while and I was giving my opinions but Do, do you feel your opinions are more muted now that you no, have your name attached? I definitely feel like I have to give my opinion and stand by it exactly how I was. Otherwise, we'll be like, that's something is off here. So nothing has changed on the channel in terms of my opinion or you know, who I'm talking about or the way that I'm talking about people and just standing firm in that. Have any of them reached out to you, the people you've covered, to say, oh, oh, it's you? At times throughout, people have reached out but not 
specifically because I revealed myself. Okay. Anything else that's on your radar you want to put on ours, especially with regard to, you know, I, I want to respect the fact that um, you're an influencer, but you are a creator, you're a journalist in this realm. What are you seeing that would make us smarter about navigating what looks like a very complicated and ever-changing space or spaces? For sure. I think that the space is always changing and yeah. it's also in a weird place right now where there's so much to consume and you know you can get it so instantly that people are kind of almost like where do i get my information from every day and that's the place that we're in but i don't think that any of these platforms are necessarily going anywhere because i think also some people are like youtube is dead because TikTok is so quick and so fast but also there's security in youtube they've been around for a really long time mm -hmm. and TikTok is in that conversation. Is it going to get banned? And so I think. Do you think it should be banned? I don't want it to be banned. Okay. I really hope it doesn't get banned. Uh, the reasons why it would be are scary. Um, so that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But I would it. I would be sad to see it go. But I think for people that are saying that you know YouTube is dead because long form content is going away, I think long form content will be here to stay. I, yeah. I definitely do think that there's people that want in-depth information about things that they heard like five seconds of info about. I want to end by asking where you get your content. I know that you obviously are a voracious consumer of the platforms that you're on, but is there anything that um, might surprise people about where you find you get inspiration, news, etc.? Honestly, everywhere everywhere i'm on TikTok. i'm using TikTok as a search engine sometimes if i can't find something on google if i'm looking for a specific date that someone posted a video or talked about a subject sometimes people it'll be on TikTok or twitter just typing in names on there and using these platforms as search engines sometimes is how i get a video made mm -hmm. yeah great Thank you for joining us. Thank you and so much for having luck, me. And good luck and look forward to continuing the conversation and uh, seeing what you do next. Thank you so much. Thank you.